Good morning, and welcome to another online Sunday service. I'm Cole, minister at Selkirk United Church, and I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in. This is the second Sunday of Easter, and it's a very different Easter season so far for all of us. I know that we all miss each other's company at church, but I'm so glad that we are still able to gather together like this online and share the good news of God's love for us. Selkirk United is an affirming, inclusive, and welcoming community of faith where we seek God's guidance in helping us become the people we were created to be. We also acknowledge that we worship on Treaty 1 land within the homeland of the Métis Nation. We begin our service today by lighting the Christ candle. May this light be for us a reminder of Jesus Christ, raised from death, giving hope, giving life, giving light to our hearts and to the whole world. Our first hymn is number 409 in Voices United. Number 409, Morning Has Broken. invite you to bow your heads for our opening prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us today, we pray, as we sing our songs and celebrate this season of Easter joy and resurrection. At the same time, our hearts are heavy with the worries and the chaos that surrounds us these days. We are pondering what it means to have faith, to believe, to be faithful, and to live in hope. In our pondering, we become aware of the continuing need for resurrection in our own lives and in this world. So come to us this day, O God. Comfort our sorrows. Resurrect our hope. Give us strength and patience and increase our faith. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. For announcements today, our church council will be meeting by Zoom this week, so that will be exciting. Wish us luck as we navigate a new way of doing the business of the church. If you have any questions for council, please feel, to, feel free to send them along. We have a great group of people on council, and you can trust that they will be working hard to keep things going as smoothly as possible during this time. I'd also like to thank everyone who has sent in best wishes and thoughts and encouraging comments to those of us who are trying to offer these worship services and other messages online. Your kind words mean a lot. I'd also like to thank all of you who are reaching out to one another in new ways and old ways, and just looking after one another as we all try to cope with this reality. You are being the church in so many wonderful ways. I just want to thank you and encourage you to keep doing what you are doing. 
If you have other announcements that you'd like to share with everyone in the congregation, just send them in and we'll share them either in the midweek message or next Sunday. For children's time this morning, I want to try something a little bit different. But first, I want to talk a little bit about doubt. Our scripture reading this morning, coming up in a few minutes, is about one of Jesus' disciples named Thomas. And he didn't believe that Jesus had really been raised from the dead. His friends told him that they had seen Jesus, but he doubted it. He wanted to see for himself. So Jesus appeared to Thomas too, and then Thomas believed it. So I want to try something with you right now. You might be like Thomas. You might doubt that this is really going to happen. What if I told you that I could make a hat magically appear on my head, just like that? Do you doubt it? You do? Okay, let's see if I can do it. Did I do it? No? Oh, okay. Well, let me try a little harder this time. Did it work? It did? Hey, that was pretty neat. Okay, let's see if I can make it disappear. Hey, I did it. Where did it go? Let's see if I can do it again. I did. On. Off. On. Off. Wow, this is fun. Oops, where did I go? I concentrated too much that time. Just a minute. Ooh, that's better. Now do you believe me that I can do magic? Well, you shouldn't. I can't, really. It's just a trick that I did using the computer. You were right to doubt. You know, there are a lot of things going on in the world right now. A lot of bad news and a lot of things that you might think are a bit scary right now. There's also a lot of doubt. Some people doubt that what the leaders are telling them is true. Some people doubt that what scientists and doctors are telling them is true. And some people doubt that things will ever get better. Well, I want you to know that it's okay to doubt things sometimes. But it's also good to trust in some things. So I want to tell you a few things that you can believe and trust. First, I cannot do magic. Believe that. Second, things are going to be fine. When the doctors and scientists and researchers figure out this virus, we'll be back to church and back to school and back to spending time with friends and the rest of our families and back to the playgrounds and baseball diamonds and soccer fields and everything else. And the other thing I want to tell you this morning is that no matter what's happening in the world, you have people who love you, and they always will, no matter what. You have families who love you. You have a church family who loves you and cares about you very much. And God loves you very, very much and always will, no matter what's going on in the world. You are not alone. You are loved very much. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll hear the Hey Now Singing Alleluia song. Okay, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is 
from John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Hear these words of Scripture. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Here ends our reading from Holy Scripture. Wow, does that scripture reading ever sound familiar, don't you think so? I don't know if you caught it, but the very first line said that the disciples were together in the house and the doors were locked because they were afraid to go out. Doesn't that sound familiar right now? And later in the passage, it says a week later, it's the same thing. The disciples are in the house, this time Thomas is with them, and again the doors are shut, and it's because they are still afraid to go out. But... Jesus appears, even though the doors are locked, even though he's just been put to death. Jesus appears among them twice, once without Thomas there and once with Thomas there. And both times Jesus says what? Both times Jesus says, peace be with you. Wouldn't it be amazing if that could happen today for us? In our situations of lockdown and isolation, if Jesus could appear among us, beside us, and say, Peace be with you. Don't be afraid. Of course, he does exactly that. He does exactly that as all of us, the hands and feet and heart of Christ in the world, reach out to each other and appear in each other's homes and apartments via Skype and text and phone and online worship and Zoom and however else you are connecting with each other. Jesus zooms in. Ooh, I like that. Jesus zooms in. The church building may be closed right now, and all of us might be, for the most part, hidden away in our upper rooms, just like the disciples were back then. But the church of Jesus, the people of God, are finding ways to appear to each other, to bring peace to each other, to keep each other from being afraid, to love each other, to help each other, to support each other, and to let one another know that they are not alone at all. They are part of an uplifting, encouraging, hopeful community of faith, and they should never doubt the truth of that, even for a moment. You know, the timing of this message is pretty great, I think, isn't it? I think it showed up in the lectionary reading list just when we needed to hear it. Jesus shows up when Thomas needed him most and brings peace and hope and love. Jesus shows up when we need him most and brings peace and hope 
and love. And we are encouraged by this story, empowered by this story, to make sure we are sharing Christ's message with those in our community who need it most today and in the days to come. Yes, good timing indeed. Of course, there's another aspect to this story, the part that usually gets our attention, and that's the doubt that Thomas expresses when he says that he won't believe unless he sees the risen Jesus himself. I don't think any of us can blame Thomas for what he says. In fact, I think that he says what any one of us would have said. We like to see things for ourselves too. We have doubts too, lots of doubts. But I don't believe that we should ever look at our doubts in a negative way, not at all. I think doubt just makes us human and it keeps us questioning. It keeps us hungry for the real truth. It keeps us thirsting for knowledge. It keeps us from getting too complacent or naive. I think we should always be questioning things, trying to figure out the truth for ourselves. A fair amount of critical thinking is actually very healthy for our faith. It actually turns us toward God, looking for answers rather than away from God. It can also turn us toward each other as we join in conversations and ask each other questions. It's why we gather in community when we can and gather in spirit when we can't be together. The words of one of our hymns this morning helps us with this idea. In one of the verses of In the Bulb, which is our next hymn, there's a line that says, in our doubt, there is believing. And I think that just means that faith is a journey more than it is a destination. And faith isn't black and white, it's complicated. And faith isn't one size fits all. Everyone comes to their faith through very different, complex life experiences, different conversations, different circumstances, different influences in their lives. And we all continue to grow in our faith as we journey through life, continuing to have those doubts and questions and conversations and experiences along the way. And I don't believe God would have it any other way. Even Jesus was a doubter and a questioner. He didn't just accept whatever the religious leaders of his day said and did as God's truth. In fact, he challenged so much of what he saw. That's one of the things we love about him. He wasn't afraid to ask the tough questions and to challenge the powers that be. And he even questioned God on occasion. So we know that we can too, without losing our faith. In fact, it is those very questions and doubts that will ultimately strengthen our faith as we seek to come closer to the truth and closer to our God. Speaking of doubt, we sure are living in a time of doubt now, aren't we? Almost everything we hear on the news from politicians, from experts, is doubted by someone and challenged and argued about and criticized and denounced. We live in a time when it's hard to know what to believe and who to believe and who to trust. In some ways that's okay. We are supposed to use our minds to discern the difference between truth and falsehood. And we certainly should hold everything that we hear up to the lenses of reason and of faith and whether they benefit the few or the many. It's okay to be truth seekers and to find ways to verify what others are saying to make sure we aren't being deceived. But I've also seen situations where people just argue for the sake of arguing and take the opposite viewpoint, not out of a quest for knowledge or truth, but with a mean-spiritedness and an aggression that isn't good or helpful for any of us. Our doubts and questions need to be accompanied by a willingness to listen and debate with respect for other people and other viewpoints. That's not always easy, especially when we see people in positions of power who are being deceitful or who are more interested in looking out for number one or who care about more about their own power than about people. We see that a lot these days. But the truth has a certain ring to it. And if we keep searching for it, whether in matters of faith or in the secular or political realm, we are likely to find it. The truth that Jesus came to give us had a certain ring to it, too. He challenged authority when he saw a misuse of power. He challenged religious leaders when he saw that their rules were more about preserving their own power than about what was best for the people they were supposed to be serving. 
and he was always on the side of those who were on the fringes of society, the ones who were left out or ignored or forgotten. If our faith leads us to act in ways that are similar to how Jesus lived his life, then we are on the right track. I encourage all of you to keep finding a healthy balance between faith and doubt, between believing and questioning. Keep seeking answers to the important questions and keep looking out for one another and finding ways to serve. If we do that, we will have God on our side and we will always be surrounded by a community of faithful people who will walk this road with us. Don't doubt that. There are some things you can count on for sure. You are not alone. You are loved. You are brothers and sisters in Christ and children of God and part of the best family that ever was. May our doubts and fears and questions along the way not overwhelm us, but may they help us to grow in our faith, making it stronger and more vibrant as we journey on together. May it be so. Amen. I'm going to offer a prayer for the offerings that continue to come in through PAR, through the mail, and all the, the donations of people's time and talents, too. Let us pray. Bless these gifts, O God, as they are offered to you. We offer our gifts in many forms, including our love for you and for one another. Use our gifts, we pray, but more importantly, use us, our hands, our feet, our hearts, to share your love and to bring healing to your world. Through Jesus the Christ we pray, amen. And let's continue in prayer as I offer the pastoral prayers. Let us pray. God of hope and love, we come into this space of worship with so many different thoughts and emotions. Some of us have gathered hesitantly unsure of what this time will hold. Some of us have gathered fearfully, unsure if we really want to be here. Some of us have come full of doubt, unsure if this time of worship will make a difference. But no matter our hesitations, fears, or doubts, each of us is called into this time and space by you, God, the giver of life. Here we are, offered the mercy promise of freedom and the peace of Christ. Help us to be open to your spirit that we might find the healing our hearts so deeply desire, and inspire us during this time that we might live into the call of Jesus to be much needed disciples in our daily lives. We have special prayers today for those we know and love who especially need your loving care and your good news this day. Today we pray for Herb, 
Derek, Dawn and Del, Lynn and Donna, Sharon, Ishbel, Ian and Ray. We have prayers for Helen, for John, Margot and Brent, Sean and Haley, Maggie, Lori, Sylvia, Eva, Mickey, Bill, and many others who are in our hearts and minds today. Hear our prayers. For all of these that we have named and for all of your children who need you, God, we ask your blessing and your healing touch. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God. Who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh. To reconcile and make new. Who works in us and in others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church. To celebrate God's presence. To live with respect in creation. To love and serve others to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for worship again today. As we end our service, may each of you have faith that Christ will make you the person you hope to be in the world you hope will come. Let us go with God to bless God's world. Amen.